Hello, planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill730. I'm Preston L. Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations as always. You've made your way to the Buffington Post. You are invited! And please bear with me today as I try and figure out my new lighting situation, my last lighting situation, which is like this jumble of lights and it's all like messy and whatnot, so I don't know how well this is going to work out, but again, please bear with me. Today it's time for another Buffyverse Q&A, a segment here on the Buffington Post wherein I take your questions about the inner workings of the Buffyverse and try my best to answer and explain them. And today's question comes from Mr. Stephen Lewis, who reached out to me on Twitter to say, Help me solve an issue with a friend of mine. Did Anya have a soul when she became a vengeance demon again? And once again, we've got a pretty simple answer to this question, but the answer does raise some more interesting questions about the Buffyverse and about the character of Anya herself. And so without further ado, let's get into Steven's question about Anyanka's soul or lack thereof. Here we go. The time has come! You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. The facts of life. There's a time you gotta go and show you grow, and now you know about the facts of life. The facts of life. The simple answer is yes, Anyanka does have a soul when she's on Yanka, when she's on Yanka 2.0, and when she's on Yanka 3.0. So if you're not into diatribes, then you can go ahead and get out now. But I'd encourage you to stay and hear me talk about why Anya's soul is actually really important. A culture as advanced beyond all that you can possibly comprehend with 100% of your brain. Toward the end of Selfless, we have an Anyanka 2.0, technically, even though we still call her Anya, who is wrestling with the fact that she has just granted this vengeance wish that has m massacred, like, 12 guys, okay? At the end of the episode, she tells to Hoffren that she wants to undo this wish, that she wants to not have killed all these guys, right? But de Hoffren tells her that the price of this would be the life and soul of a vengeance demon. And so right there, we know that not only do vengeance demons have like a life, if you will, but they do in fact have souls. This means that Anya, when she was a demon the first time around, had a soul. It means that she has a soul uh, now at this point in her life. And it also means that Halfrek has a soul because, of course, de Hoffren sacrifices Halfrek to undo the wish. And I would argue that the soul itself is quite necessary in creating the Vengeance Demons. From all of the evidence that we've seen, Vengeance Demons begin as human, with the possible exception of de Hoffren. The first time that Anya becomes Vengeance Demon is after she already performs an act of pure vengeance. She turns Olaf into a troll, and her vengeful nature in itself, still being a human, is what allows for de Hoffren to really recognize her and come to her with this offer that he kind of knows that she'll accept, because she's pretty much already got vengeance in her soul. The second time that Anya becomes a vengeance demon is after she has been left at the altar and she's in despair, and again, she chooses vengeance over compassion, if you will, or forgiveness, um, because she is in this very vulnerable state, and de Hoffren kind of preys upon her feeling of vengeance, and we see Anya when she's technically like Anyanka 2.0, try and get her vengeance and not able to, but still throughout the season, she's not very different from our seasons four through the middle of six Anya, because she is very much still herself. She has her vengeance demon powers, but they don't really change her moral center, they just kind of change 
who she answers to and kind of what it is that she does based on her job. You feel me? Now in the case of Anyanka 3.0, he wasn't trying to transform um, not a ghost on Yanka 3.0 into a vengeance demon. He created her as a vengeance demon and simply needed her to really feel that vengeance within her very self in order to truly become. And the same goes for Jonathan. Jonathan, there is an argument to be made about whether or not he actually has a soul after he's semi-resurrected in season 10, but the fact of the matter is, Jonathan, whoever this is, has to feel vengeance and actually prove that he as a human is willing to go and get his vengeance on someone before he will be made into a vengeance demon. And that's really the important thing. Like, humans have to make choices to be vengeful. It's not like the Hovren just comes down to anyone. You have to really have that vengeance in your heart and in your soul. That vengeance really drives you before you can be invited to join the vengeance demon. And this is an interesting thing to think about, because we have a bunch of different vengeance demons, and the interesting thing that we're led to believe is that they all must have done these kind of terrible acts of vengeance upon a fellow human, right? Which leads us to believe that Halfrek must have as well, and Halfrek, you know, on Yanka, she's kind of like fighting for scorned women, whereas we find out that Halfrek is fighting for the children. Which leads me to believe that perhaps Halfrek, in fact, put uh, like her vengefulness, her vengeance, <laughs> into uh, going after one or both of her parents. You see what I'm saying? Like, she's talking about, oh, we have to help the children, we have to help the children. It makes me think that Cecily, as she was in her human life, was actually, um, she took her vengeance out on her parents. And in theory, all of the vengeance demons would have to have um, poured their vengeance somewhere in order for them to, of course, be recognized and invited by De Hoffren into the vengeance crew. Because it's about people who are so far gone and so far removed from compassion and forgiveness that they literally throw their entire selves into vengeance. Anyanka... <laughs> says, vengeance is what I am. And so we see that in order for you to really be full vengeance demon, your soul itself has to be committed to that. And that's why when Anya in season seven is no longer really committed to that, De Hoffren strips her of her vengeance powers because her, her spirit isn't in it. And I feel like that, that soul in the first place is what's necessary. Now, there are a lot of other things that have to do with, like, souls, like, which demons have souls, which demons don't. We know that the vampires don't, except for, you know, our two big vampires with souls. However, um, the presence of a soul, I've noticed in a couple of occasions within the Buffyverse, is usually noted by female demons. We see in uh, 5 by 5 when we revisit Angel getting his soul after um, Faith has kind of come back to L.A., we see that Darla recognizes the presence of a soul within Angelus at that point. And later on in season seven of the Buffy show, uh, we see that Anya, after she is demon again, she recognizes the presence of a soul within Spike. And so there seems to be something about like women recognizing the souls within demons, etc. But the punchline is, yes, Anya has a soul, and that soul is the thing that really propels her demonhood, if you will. Yeah, like I said, it's a pretty simple answer, but it does raise a lot of interesting questions about the motivations and the kind of purpose that you kind of give yourself after you really give your self to a certain idea or a certain um, cause, rather than kind of taking in the bigger picture at large, which of course Anya does do in all of her lives, except for her first demon life that was just kind of like stripped from her. But hey, that's called character growth. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. I hope you're having a great 2016 so far. You can come right back here to the Buffington Post anytime for Buffy the Vampire Slayer reviews, Angel and Faith reviews, Buffyverse discussions, discussions on the other Slayers, and more. Have a great day today, and we'll see you next time.
Arms up.